for some reason when you land your dream job you just feel like you're not worthy all of a sudden okay i'm back i had to cut a little bit i landed the school social work role at 26 years old that was my dream job so i was just kind of shocked and stunned i remember having conversation after conversation with my husband feeling like am i ready for this like oh my gosh i can't what if i mess up so i understand all the anxieties and the excitement that goes into it to get a little bit more into tips is to give you a little bit more concrete information as to what the role is and how the day-to-day -day looks like let's get into the tips can't really, at least I don't, side too much one way or the other with administration or faculty and teachers or support staff. Keep a neutral base to have people feel comfortable to come with either referrals, suggestions, ideas, even complaints. And you may find that teachers and paraprofessionals, people may gravitate towards you to talk and be available for them as well. That your clients are gonna be each student in the school. That doesn't mean you have to create, I don't know, 300 case files for each student. All of that is usually kept in the front office, like the attendance office will have a file for each student. And it's fine to use those files if you need to, place little notes or things like that. Of course, it has to be um, non-confidential information but don't feel like you have to create a file for every single student at least i don't i open a file and place them on my like literal caseload if i'm working with them on an issue if they come to my office for something that's more long term i do document every single student that comes in whether it be for a pencil to talk piece of paper that's documented because that's how my school district wants us to document our services if you're interested in any of the documents that i use and utilize please let me know in the comments below and i'll create a bundle i'll create something that you can download for yourself and utilize you do want to be sure that you're getting yourself out there it's really easy to kind of stay in your office and work just with the students on your caseload but you do want to walk the halls a little bit do some hall duty if you're not on that a monitor maybe in the lunchroom once a week that shows that you're a team player and it also is going to give you a look at how your clients and your students are doing out in their natural environment i don't and i wouldn't suggest being added to the lunchroom monitor type of situation because that's really gonna stop you and prevent you from being accessible to students and doing home visits throughout the day and things like that i do have a video on productivity that goes into this a little bit more because you will feel like things are flying at you once you get in the groove people are going to come to you with so much referrals back and forth so check out that video i'll put it in the cards above if you haven't already done so okay so a few more more concrete tips don't let students go to your office without a pass especially if you are in secondary there is a lot of skipping that is happening and there's a lot of avoidance of tests and things like that it might feel really nice to have the students reach out for you but please be aware that sometimes they just don't want to be in class make sure you have the bell schedule on your lanyard or something like by your badge because that's going to let you know when the bell's going to ring obviously and you need to know this information so that you can do a countdown for them i always let students know i'm never going to send you back to class in tears or completely upset it, we're going to get to a point where you're calm that but that does mean that you're going to have to get back to class this is not a place you can run to and stay in here the whole day because then I wouldn't be doing my job. That wouldn't be helping you at all because school is for learning and growing and reaching your goals. And they, they usually understand that. But if you have those conversations early in the session with them, then they get it. When you start telling them, okay, we have about five minutes to the bell. Let's start wrapping this up. They understand because you lay out the groundwork beforehand. Really make as much parent contact as you possibly can. Positive and you know of course we're gonna have to reach out during the negative situations someone's missing class someone's truant all those really difficult conversations are usually gonna have you involved in some way that's not to say that you're not gonna be liked because there is a way to have these difficult conversations if I make a negative 
reach out, then I try to follow up in a later day and later week with something positive. It's that give and take. And I try to have that relationship with my parents that allows them to build rapport with me because you might, you may not have as much contact with parents as you think. Um, there's a lot of calling and dropping by the house and it kind of turns into this gotcha type of thing. At least that's how the parents feel it. So it's really good to do those positives with negatives so that they don't feel like you just come around when it's negative bad news. I would use this and I think I've said this in so many videos, use confidentiality as your muscle. You're the only person on campus that is going to remain confidential. You're the only spot, the only office. Please be sure that you have an office on your own, something that's private unless you're sharing with another social worker. This is important and that's something that students and parents alike are really going to appreciate and it sets you apart. Get very comfortable with explaining what your role is as a school social worker. A lot of what I have to do on first meetings with students and parents is to break down the stereotype that they have that I'm gonna either try to catch them, take their kids away, judge them in some way. Those are the things that come across. I've had some parents really just come guns blazing, not literally, but they've really come at me very aggressively because I've triggered just by saying oh I'm the social worker I've triggered in them their trauma of being removed from their own families that's happened to me a few times so I really try to distinguish myself and let them know that I'm really a partner I'm the link between the home and the school I'm there to help that communication flow some roles are different than others so for example in my role I do reach out for attendance I do reach out to provide resources, um, clothing, backpacks. I also provide guidance and individual one-on-one -on -one type of, I don't call it therapy, you can't, you can't necessarily call it therapy, you would call it guidance or counseling. I feel comfortable doing that because I have my clinical license. Not all social workers have that and if you don't feel comfortable doing the guidance one-on-one, -on -one, you can work crisis to crisis and of course help the students feel calm. I'm going to be sharing some videos on how I would work with meditation and mindfulness with students those are really great easy interventions to use that you don't have to have like a clinical license or a therapy background to do so i'm going to share those coming up soon look forward to that video but if you're not quite comfortable with talking one-on-one -on -one and doing those types of discussions with students, don't do them. Refer out to the counselor, refer out to another social worker or a, an outside counseling service in general. I'm like scratching my head trying to think of other things because there's so much more I can say. I hope that this video helped you. If there are some burning questions still, please drop them down below. I will answer each and every one of them or I'll create a whole new video on it because honestly, your questions are gold to me. I am wishing you social work success. I know that you're gonna be awesome. Let me know how your first day goes. Share your journey with me with hashtag socialworkscrapbook. Bye-bye.